Hello, and thank you for watching this presentation by the American Iron Society. Please support the organization by becoming a member. Go to irises.org and click on join. Thank you. So welcome everyone to um, uh, tonight's webinar. This is the uh, 27th webinar in the AIS wow. webinar series. And uh, tonight's program is by Jill Bonino, uh, Iris Color Patterns, Yesterday, Today, and Tomorrow. Uh, and I know that a lot of you know Jill. She is um, a master judge. She provides uh, programs and judges training on various topics. Uh, Jill has been a member of the AIS board for various times for a long time. She's the uh, American Iris Society treasurer. And she's also the American Iris Society Foundation secretary treasurer. So. Uh, Jill is a, um, a very accomplished and um, busy lady. So uh, <laughs> welcome, Jill. Oh, thank you. And I love taking pictures. So that's uh, what helps me. I wanna use the pictures and programs if I can. Um, tonight's program, it, it's an hour. You get an hour judges training. Uh, it focuses on the part of the, the handbook, which has not been updated yet, and we do plan to do that. Um, the, the terminology for color patterns comes from the glossary, which is in the back. And it has a certain number of them that are common and have been used for decades. Uh, but in the last couple of decades, uh, new color patterns have come out. And there are several of those that are not in the judge's handbook, but I will talk about them tonight. And then also talk a little bit about uh, the difference between what is a color pattern and what is say a, an enhancement or a color embellishment, uh, which we'll get to later in, in the program. And then at the very end, you get to decide what it is. I've got pictures of things and it could be a combination of several patterns or something new. So uh, there, there's a lot of color uh, from, uh, and some historic iris as well as modern form iris. Color patterns have been around since iris were first hybridized. So um, I think at this point, I'll, Gary, can I go ahead and share and bring up the program? Yes, you can. Okay. Okay. This is um, a PowerPoint and it shows the, okay, there it is. Uh, iris color patterns yesterday, today, and tomorrow uh, with a variety of, you know, all different, all different colors. Every class has the possibility to create, to display itself in uh, all the color patterns. So I have pictures here, not just of tall bearded, but of uh, medians, uh, Louisiana's, uh, spurious. Uh, there's, they're all there throughout the entire classes of iris. The first one, beginning with A, is the amina pattern. Uh, this is in the judge's handbook in the back. Uh, it's a color pattern with white standards and colored falls, uh, any color. Early ones had blue or purple falls, and pinnacle was the first yellow amina. Uh, the pink amina has been the holy grail for Barry Blythe, I think for his entire uh, hybridizing career, uh, looking for a pink amina. So uh, there's a lot of ones that are, are, that are very close. Uh, this is a picture of pinnacle, the original, um, uh, yellow amina, and I grow this in my art. I have a small collection of historics, but I've really been interested as I've taken pictures to see uh, what was around in 1907 and 1894, and you know, in the the early days of iris hybridization. Uh, and you see those same colors today. Uh, these are more aminas, uh, Wabash and Historic on the left, 
a full figured and tree of songs, which is the Siberian Amina. The standards are white and the falls are yellow or gold. Bicolor iris. This is a color pattern where the flowers have standards and falls of different colors. The falls being usually darker than the standards, but usually is one of those words that isn't always, it's not always, it's usually. Uh, tetraploid iris advanced this pattern. Early ones were Dream Lover, Amethyst Flame, and Mystique, all of which I think were Dykes Medal winners. And here are some bicolors, historic Mary Geddes, uh, Dykes Medal winner from I think the mid 50s, 1950s, uh, Sweet Musette, and Man's Best Friend, which I think is an IB, showing a blue, blue standards and kind of red rusty falls. I know we officially don't have red in the color iris, but we're getting very close. Bitone. Now this is a color pattern where the flowers have standards and falls of different amounts of the same color. Ordinarily, the falls are darker than the standards, but don't have to be. This is where you have rosy wings, which is two different shades of pink. You have a lighter pink in the standards and a darker rose in the falls. Wild Wings, I think, which is by Keith Keppel, has a lighter purple in the standards and dark purple falls. This is a seedling. Uh, actually, this is a seedling from a new hybridizer. This is David Toth's uh, daughter, Anne, and it's an IB that I saw this year during the National Convention. And this shows a yellow by color uh, with lighter yellow standards and darker yellow golden falls. And it's also a space ager. A blend. Now a blend is the color pattern where a combination or mixture of two or more colors, has to be at least two uh, or more, are present in the same parts of the flower. Uh, there are more color washes here than distinct areas or bands of color. We'll get to distinct areas and bands of color later on. Now these colors actually were, fell into disfavor when early breeders were trying to develop and clarify the self pattern. So they kind of got pushed to the back of the line for a while, but they have, uh, they have come back. This is American made, which I took a number of years ago in Cooley's garden. And I have a, a close up of the standards where you can see purple, kind of a rose color, a light brown color, all mixed into the same petal, the same standards. The, the blend, you've got to have two or more colors included on the same uh, part of the flower, either the standards or the falls or both. Thornbird is also a blend uh, on the falls. And like a rainbow is an amina blend where the, the white, the standards are white and the falls have more than, uh, have two or more colors. Okay, the luminata. This is a color pattern from Placata breeding. Uh, so if you see Illuminata, it has Placata in its background. The falls have a brushed pattern with paler veins and a clear unmarked area or spots around the beards. These first showed up in the 40s in the Sass Brothers seedlings. Moonlit C introduced in 1942 became the prototype. And here's a color of Moonlit Sea, Sass 1943. You can see the white uh, veining uh, over the darker falls. You can see the white spot around the beard. And that just kind of brushed glowing look. These are more modern luminatas. Uh, I can't read the name for, I guess it's Moonlit Water is on the, on the left. 
and telepathy on the right. So the Luminatas don't just come in blue or purple. There are yellow ones, there are pink ones, there are, uh, so it's, it's not just one uh, type of color. Neglecta, now this is an, I've always found this to be an odd pattern. Uh, it's a color pattern with light blue standards and darker blue colored falls. That's it. Uh, and here is Proud Tradition, which has the, the light blue standards and the darker blue falls. Um, there are no other color patterns with say pink or purple or yellow. Um, the the bicolors take care of those. Why there's a separate pattern for blue, I, I do not know. The placata pattern. This is really, uh, hybridizers have been doing a lot of, of work in the last couple of decades with placatas. Uh, this is a color pattern where a lighter ground color is stippled, dotted, or stitched with a darker color. Uh, irises with blue stitching over a white ground were growing 400 years ago. Madame Chirot introduced in 1840 is still grown today. This is another color pattern that took off with tetraploid advances, the increase in the chromosomes from the diploid iris to the tetraploid iris. This is San Francisco, the first uh, Dykes Medal winner in 1927, the purple white placata. You can see the stitching around the falls and on the standards. They come in, in other uh, classes of iris. Jellicle Cat is, I think, a standard dwarf bearded, another purple white placata. And then, of course, Jesse's song, the classic, is a purple white placata. The fancy placata is an extreme placata type color pattern having a riotous mixture of colors. Uh, this is where the, the dotting is more intense. Um, or the stippling is more intense. In other words, it's harder to see the ground color on the fancy placatas. Uh, Temporal Anomaly by Rick Tasco is one of those. Uh, Sorbonne uh, by Keith Keppel. You can see the, the uh, there's just much more color, more uh, patterning on the falls than there uh, is in the other blue white placatas. And the self pattern. Uh, this is an iris with standards and falls of the same color. It comes from self pollination, uh, the placing of pollen of a flower on its own stigmas. Uh, now, I've given this program before, and one thing that is not included in the judge's handbook, which we still need to resolve, is in order for the iris to be a self pattern. Does the beard have to be the same color as the standards and falls? Now, these pictures here show vanity. It's a pink self with a little darker pink beard. Well endowed is a gold self with a gold beard. Uh, there is no answer in the judge's handbook for that right now. As you can see, um, Swans in Flight, a Siberian, is a self, a white. Uh, Black is black, the beard equals the, the same color as the standards and falls. So that's, um, that's a question to, to be answered later. Uh, Varicata, uh, this is a color pattern that came out of uh, a species. Uh, it has yellow standards and darker, usually red falls. The name is derived from a European species of diploid tall bearded iris, iris variegata, which has yellow and purple falls. Kathy Chilton, one of our classic uh, American uh, variegatas with the gold standards and the red rust falls. Zumbumafu, I think I pronounced that right, Zumbumafu, a miniature dwarf bearded, same coloring. 
uh, and whoop them up and intermediate bearded the yellow standards and the uh, red falls. Broken color. Now this is not in the glossary. This is in the judge's handbook under the novelties. And it appears as a random application of two or more colors, possibly due to an unstable gene in pigment production. Uh, but a lot of hybridizers have really worked on this pattern. Uh, Brad Kasparic, uh, David Toth is now working on uh, broken color. Uh, a lot of hybridizers, I don't mean to leave anybody out, but um, this has become quite a new area of exploration in the hybridizing world. Um, the flowers have streaks and splashes of color. No two flowers are alike. They do appear most often uh, in iris that have placatas in their background. Kaleidoscope from 1929, uh, early, early broken color. At the time, these were kind of, and Lloyd Austin, he, uh, well, he started Space Agers. I think he did, well, I can't remember if he did broken color or not, but uh, these have been around for uh, a long time. They just haven't always been worked on. Humoresque, uh, this was one of uh, Keith Keppel's early introductions in the 60s. And it's a blue broken color with the streaks on the falls, splashes of a lighter, lighter color. Two more, more recent ones, Shaken All Over and Tiger Honey. Again, they're not, doesn't have to be purple, it can be yellow, multicolors, purple, blue. I don't know that we've seen a black and white one yet. Modern Madness. This is a uh, 2020 introduction by David Toth uh, showing broken color and space ager. And it's actually showing the broken color pattern in the appendages. So things are, things are moving along. Splitter Splatter, a broken color Louisiana. I just saw this in um, Janice Shackelford's garden in San Diego. Yeah. Now these are newer patterns that are not currently in the judge's handbook, but they have become common usage over the last few years and they do need to be incorporated into the glossary. First one is the Glaciata. And this is, um, an early Sass Brothers line that resulted in unmarked flowers from crosses involving nothing but placatas. In other words, you got a plain uh, iris, looked like a self, uh, but yet the crosses were all placatas. Uh, the white ones were called ice whites. The clear yellow ones were called lemon ices. Uh, these are also known as placata recessives. There is no blue pigment in any of these flowers. And hybridizers can probably tell when you're in the garden, what is a glaciata and what is not. But I, as a lay person without the genetic horticultural background, uh, to me, this is a nice peach self. I wouldn't be able to tell this is a glaciata or that it didn't have any blue, blue pigment. But according to the registration and the hybridizers put this in their written descriptions of the irises that if not for you is a glaciata. So are these uh, Glacier Blush by Jed Lecca and Love and Devotion by Paul Black in 10. Um, they know from their breeding that there's no blue pigment and these flowers came out of placata crosses. Now, thanks to Chuck Chapman, he sent me an email uh, I think the end of last week, letting me know of the Celestar Glaciata pattern. And I, I was not aware of this. The Celestar pattern, the standards and fall petals reverse when exposed to the sun uh, just prior to opening, they turn purple. So you can see that this is a Glaciata, Wild and Crazy from Paul Black. As it's being exposed to the sun, the under part 
the reverse, the reverse side of the petal exposed to the sun is turning purple. And then it will open. And on this, you can see a little bit, there's a little bit of purple left on the underside of the fall on this petal of wild and crazy. But otherwise it looks like any other glaciata. Now, how this came to be, I, I don't know. This is very new and needs further looking into, um, but uh, it's very different. I was not aware that the petals can change color as they're opening. Uh, the reverse amina, now this most people have heard of. This is also known as the dark top pattern. The standards are darker color than the falls. In other words, the standards are a darker color and the falls typically are white or very close to white. Uh, this pattern started with the reverse blue bitones. Here we have wintry sky on the left and a Siberian berries and cream uh, that could pass for a reverse amina, even though there's dotting and stitching on the falls the falls are predominantly white. The Emma Cook pattern. Uh, this uh, came about uh, uh, introduced by uh, the Cook, I don't know his first name, Mr. Cook, in 1959, won an honorable mention and an award of merit. Uh, this picture comes out of the wiki and has been used uh, in modern hybridizing to come up with Queen Circle, which won the dikes. It's one of the more uh, noted Emma Cook patterns. Now the Emma Cook pattern does not necessarily have to be a uh, white standards with the falls edged blue. Uh, it could be white standards with the fall, falls edged another color as well. That was Paul Cook. Yeah, this is Paul Cook, thank you. Um, this is another new pattern. Uh, this is the maculosa pattern. This is different than broken color. It is, uh, shows a pattern of speckles on the petals. The flowers still are unique. No two flowers are the same, but the flower pattern has to include specks of color, like Don't Doubt Dalton, and also Gesundheit. Uh, Chuck Bunnell's uh, miniature tall bearded. You can see the petals are just flecked with the darker color. This makes it the maculosa pattern. And hopefully I'm pronouncing that right. Uh, possible added patterns. Uh, when Puccini came out in expose, uh, they were different, but what do you call them? Uh, there's, it's, Similar to Illuminata pattern on the falls, it's kind of a wash of color. Uh, and, and no one so far has come up with uh, a name or just calling it the Puccini pattern or something, uh, but it is unique. Starship Enterprise also, uh, when it came out, came to, seemed to look very different than other, other patterns. Now, now you could consider it a blend because it's got more than two colors on the falls. Uh, but you, when you see new, new flowers, uh, at least when I'm looking at new things, I tend to think, oh, that must have come from Starship Enterprise or that must have come from Puccini. Now, I don't know unless I look it up, but you, you recognize the, the familiarity of the, the, the color pattern. Now, once we get through this, these specific names of the color patterns, we get into another area of um, color, color patterns and iris, um, edging, bands, veining, thumbprints, zonal spots, center lines. All of these are features of the color pattern. They're also color enhancements. Um, We've so far just been using edges and banding and veining and things in the description uh, of the iris, uh, but it is up to the hybridizer to uh, write his description of his introductions as he sees it. And a number of these 
embellishments have come out in the last several decades. Uh, the zonal or spray pattern is usually an iris with white or a lightened area around the beard. Some of the spots look like white spray pattern. Um, when the spot is big enough to be the ground color, when is the spot big enough to be the ground color overlaid with a band? That's up to the hybridizer on how they want to describe it. City lights, uh, a classic zonal spot pattern around the beard. Same with Gypsy Lord. These spots are not uh, big enough that they take up a substantial part of the falls. Martian Sunset saw this this year at uh, the Airs Garden uh, in Las Cruces. Uh, spray pattern. This is more of what the spray pattern looks like on the falls, uh, where it just kind of gradually blends into the, the fall color. But again, it's not taking up the entire area of the falls. Bands. Bands of different colors around standards or falls. How wide is a band versus an edge? Uh, must the band have a specific edge or can it wash into the pe petal color? Uh, there are irises that have just a band on the falls, like wonders never cease. Just simple white band edging the falls. Amina with banded falls. Others will have bands on the standards, all about spring. It's the, the standards are edged gold. The falls have a bit of an edge, but not as much as the band on the standards. Double Ringer from Rick Ernst has two bands on the falls. Edges with rims or halos. This is where you get into some uh, parts of the flower are edged in a very razor thin or pinstripe uh, rim on either the standards or the falls or both. And, and the question becomes, when does a wire rim or a halo become a band? From 1907, uh, King showing just, it's a variegata showing a very simple little rim around the falls. And then Tiffany from Sass in 1938, you can see on both the standards up here and the falls, there's a distinctive darker uh, edge to the rim. It's not part of the placata band. It's in addition to the placata feature. Here's a Tyson seedling, again, with the very thinnest outline border in a darker color. It adds distinctiveness uh, to the flower. It's just another um, uh, enhancement that can make the flower look more distinctive. Veining, oh, we've really gotten into veining the last several years. Uh, usual, usually, Veining is darker veining in the standards and or the falls than the ground color of the petals, either the standards or the falls. Lighter veining indicates the luminata pattern. So here is opening number showing the darker veining in the standards. And again, newfound glory, darker veining in the standards. Color wash. This is um, uh, an enhancement where there isn't a defined border on, on the color. It, it's like a, someone took a paintbrush and just swiped the bottom of the fall. Uh, this tends to remind me somewhat of the expose or the Puccini patterns. Uh, this is Celtic Tartan by uh, Keppel, and he mentions color wash in his uh, description of this particular variety. 
Chevron marking. This is something new that I found this year from going through uh, and reading descriptions in uh, online catalogs of a number of hybridizers looking for different terms that they were using now to describe their iris. And this is a new one that popped up in one of Paul Black's uh, 2022 introduction called a chevron marking. And this is, it's shown on the falls. You can see almost a direct line down to a point and then a direct line back like a chevron, which is the insignia worn in the military. Uh, different, not something that I've seen before. And, and this is um, Expanding Universe, one of his new introductions this year. Waterfall marking. This is uh, included in the description for Inkblot uh, by Keith Keppel. Uh, he specifically mentions a waterfall marking on the falls of this particular variety. The color just kind of cascades down the petal. Uh, going back to Celtic tartan, you could also argue this is also the waterfall pattern. Uh, so we need to define differences between, between terms. Thumbprints, I like thumbprints. These are a solid smudge of different color on either side of the beard in the haft area. Again, you can go back to 1939 and see thumbprints in Peacock's Eye, an MTB, and also Persian Berry, uh, one of the oldies but goodies that has the darker smudge around the, the beard and haft area. Sunset uh, Silhouette from 07 has a lighter thumbprint. You see the darker kind of rosy lavender falls with a gold thumbprint that really sets off the beard area. Uh, Attractive Lady by Tom Johnson. The, the thumbprint really, it shows off the flower and this, your eye goes to the center of the flower. The center stripe. This can be a darker or a lighter stripe of color on falls that, and this, the stripe is a different color from the ground cover. And then the question becomes, when does a stripe become a wash or a waterfall? This is whole cloth, a Dykes Medal winner, 1958, Paul Cook, uh, showing the center stripe, which is not as uh, delineated as it is on some iris. This one looks like it's going into the the wash area, but still you have a distinctive darker line down the falls. Jasberry uh, by the painters. This shows a more distinct line, center line from the beard down to the end of the falls. Color pattern combo. So this is where it gets fun. Uh, any pattern except the self pattern can be combined with any other pattern for additional color distinctiveness. Here we have uh, a bicolor blend. We've got gold, lavender purple with a band on the falls. And the, the band color is also used for the thumbprints around the beard. The uh, Varigata Placata blend with veining and center stripe. You've got bicolor here uh, with veining in the standards and in the falls. It's a placata because it's got the stitching and the center stripe down the falls. It also happens to be a space age, if you notice the little, the little horns. This is a Varicata blend with the band and center wash. You've got a gold standard. The falls have red and gold in them. So we've got the blend portion of the pattern in the falls. Very nice little center wash of the kind of red purple down the center. 
very pretty. Dark top by color. You've got a darker top, lighter falls, but this is not a reverse amina. Uh, the falls are a pink peach, so it's actually a bicolor. And then this is a, a dark top bicolor with, is it banded standards or is this a midrib wash up the center of the standards? This still needs to be clarified. Bicolor blend with veins. Here's a spuria uh, from Jim Hedgecock. You can see it's a, two different colors on the standards and the falls with the veining on the falls. Broken color luminata. This is from Paul Black, one of his uh, 2022 introductions. It's also an IB uh, showing, and he describes this as a broken color luminata. Neglect a broken color. You've got the light blue on the top, darker blue on the falls, uh, Millennium Falcon. I think this is a Casparic. Uh, so you've got a neglect of broken color. Veined Amina. Uh, this is a, a pattern combination uh, included in the zebra butter registration description by Kanarowski. Uh, showing the, he believes this is the first veined amina with the white standards, uh, the different color falls, but with very distinctive saturated veining going all through the falls. Here we have a, a bitone because you've got two different uh, tones of the same color. You've got light purple, dark purple, Bitoned placata with banded standards and falls in two different colors. This and that. This is a banded bitone placata. You've got um, the band around both the standards and the falls, but it's the same color. Uh, and this is an IB by Paul Black showing the Again, the bitone effect with bands. And you could also argue there's some veining in there too. Dark top placata. Uh, the dark has a rather muted placata pattern in it, but it's pretty much solid uh, dark rose color. And then you have the placata pattern in the falls with the white ground overstitched with a, a band around the falls. Steely Dawn, a dark top bicolor spuria. Uh, you've got two different colors, uh, kind of a tan purple standards with yellow falls. You can also argue there's a center stripe down the falls and a little, the shadow of a purple band on the falls at the very edge. Varagata broken color. Uh, we've got a gold standards, the darker red falls like the Varagata, but the falls are streaked and stippled with a lighter like cream color uh, to make it broken color. This is an Amina placata with center stripe. Splashicata from Rick Tasco, uh, showing the uh, white standards and then the dotted stitched falls of the placata pattern with the center stripe down the middle. Oh, now here's an um, Amina blend with thumbprint and edging. The Amina, the white standards, the blend, uh, the falls have two or more colors included. You've got a thumbprint on the halves in a gold color. And then you've got a lighter edging, which is 
a pale cream. It's not a white, but it's not a gold either. Uh, again, very, very creative, very distinctive coloring. And then this is what I call a veined blend. This is also from Kantorowski. It's one of his 22 introductions, but you can see it's obviously got a uh, clear veining uh, on the falls, but they, it also has four colors on the falls and two colors of veins, which we have not necessarily seen before. You can see yellow veins, you can see dark uh, violet veins, and well, there's a lot going on here. You've got at least one, two, three, four colors, with one, yeah, two colors of veins and four colors on the falls. Now, the next group is what do you think it is? Uh, this could be a bicolor Emma Cook because it's got the color band around the bottom of the fall, similar to Emma Cook and Queen Circle, uh, but it's got a different color wash through the midrib. Here is a banded standards luminata where the, the standards don't show so much of the luminata pattern. The falls definitely do with the white spot around the beard and the white, the lighter veining going down the falls, but it's also got this different color of band on the standards. This is actually a seedling from the uh, International Iris Competition that was planted in Presby Iris Garden. So this has not been introduced yet. And here we have, I've got several Keppel seedlings, which he's been playing with, um, where he's got bicolor placatas or bicolor luminatas. We've got a, a lot going on here in uh, the color of this one iris. We have a, a white wash up the standard. So is the white wash the ground color edge, edged in blue or not? We have thumbprints in a darker color around the halves. The falls have a different ground color. It's yellow versus the white that's in the standards. Uh, and you've got the bands the, uh, around the falls. Uh, but it's got the luminata markings of the lighter, lighter veins. I, again, this is a seedling. It has not been introduced. Here's a bicolor placata. Two different colors of standards and falls and two different ground colors. Two different center stripe colors, one in the standards, one in the falls. Now, half spots, These, this is coming out just in the last few years where thumbprints are growing out and they're taking over the entire area around the beard. Is this a half spot or a pansy spot or do we call it something else? But there's no, no break between the spot that's near the halves and all the way around the beard. Is this a half spot with blended wash? Now the wash doesn't go all the way down. It just streaks out a little bit. Is this a zonal spot that's gold overwashed with a darker color? It's a blended spot. So uh, things to think about, things to, to wonder about when you're looking at the flowers uh, to, just try to absorb the whole effect of, of what you're looking at. Uh, here's a dark top blend, dark, darker color on the top, uh, two colors on the falls with a center uh, ground color edged band. And then this is my last slide and it's one of my favorites uh, called Expect Wonders. And that's what I continue to 
expect from irises. There's always something new coming out. Uh, this has a little bit maybe of Puccini in the in the falls, or this could be a wash. You've got banded standards. Uh, you've got thumbprints on the halves. Um, it's just a nice blend that just looks easy on the eye. Um, when you're in the garden and you're looking at, at irises, obviously look at the whole plant. Look at the leaves, look at how it's increased, look at how the branching is, look at the bud count, uh, but also appreciate the flower. The, the, there are so many new color variations coming out uh, that you, we just don't know what's coming next. Uh, and that is the end. If we've got questions, or do you want to go right to the test? Uh, well, I don't have any questions, uh, Jill, but okay. uh, I had a couple of comments. One was uh, early on from Lisa Denton, um, the one you were talking about um, selfs and, and the mm -hmm. beard color. And she mentions, my glossary states beard may or may not be the same color. OK. And, uh, and then uh, Jean Richter mentioned the Paul Cook uh, name of um, the Cook hybridizer is Paul. Oh, thank you. Yes. Um, and I don't have any other questions. Does anybody have questions that they want to ask at the moment? Oh my goodness. I think you overwhelmed them with all of those different. Uh, uh, I think, yeah. <laughs> The, uh, uh, the possibilities, the, the combinations that I certainly are definitely not yellow and purple anymore. I do have a, uh, 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 a question that says, would you review thumbprint again, please? Okay. Uh, thumbprint. Thumbprint is the marking. It looks like you've pressed your thumb on the halves of the falls right next to the beard. And it's a different color than what the falls are. Does that help? Yeah, I have a question about thumbprint because I thought I had seen that term used with medians and it's a dark thumbprint in the middle of the fall, not, not what you're describing at all, but a dark oh, spot, okay, a dark spot. On the, and so on the falls, middle, but just yeah. in below the beard okay that i haven't seen um in terms of uh, seeing medians described that way uh, but i have seen read a lot of descriptions of tall bearded with the thumbprint on either side uh -huh. of the halves uh, there's a question uh, from uh, izzy it says what is the name of the next to the last iris half spot i'm not sure which one that was Okay, okay, let me, oh, let me share and pull it up. And, okay, now let me go back if I can do that. Yeah. Okay, is this the one that you're talking about? The next to the last, this is the next to the last picture. The dark top blend. Yeah. Um, Do you have a name for that iris? No, I don't. This is a seedling. Seedling. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, Del Perry has her hand up. Del, would you, do you want to ask a question? Yes, I had a couple of comments. One was between broken color and the maculosa spot that uh -huh. we have to be careful, I think, not to confuse those two patterns with an iris that has the virus, which can create a ah. similar effect but can only be determined pretty much by looking at it under a microscope. You're absolutely right. You're right. I, there is an iris virus, which leaves dotting and mottling on uh, flower petals. Uh, that is not a good thing. It's not, no. in, it was not intended by the hybridizer. Yeah, and it's uh, very prominent in arrowbreds. Uh, okay. Okay. And the other thing was that when you spoke about um, the Luminata, uh, I had heard that in order to be a Luminata, it also needed to be uh, anthocyanin absent in the throat. 
Is that true? That is not in the glossary description. Yeah, I know. And when mm -hmm. you were talking about um, uh, spirit goddess, you said red, but I have always heard that it's any of the, the, the brown, purple, red, blue. Uh, yes, the, maroon, the rust. Yes, yes. I'm, I, um, I get lazy sometimes and I shouldn't uh, because we don't really have a true red color right. in the iris right. yet. Right, yeah. right. And you said somewhere that it had to be blue. And I think here again, you meant blue or purple, the anthracyan somewhere. I don't remember where in my notes I took that. The, the glaciata has no blue pigment. Correct. And it is no, just... no anthracyan, which is also yeah. purple. The blue purple. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. Yeah, I think that was it. Yeah. Thank okay. you. Um, uh, Don and Jenny Spoon point out that, you know, I think the, the spot pattern on um, uh, some of the uh, dwarf iris is a pumila spot. Um, yes, it's a pumila. So, uh, and I, think, I should add that. I should add yeah. that into the program. <laughs> right. And uh, I think some people are, are uh, calling that. Uh, maybe the thumbprint or confusing that with the thumbprint uh, pattern. Okay. Um, there, there's also the arrow spot that can sh show right. up in medians that don't qualify to be an arrow also, or an arrow bread. Uh, okay. Yeah, and Lois Rose mentioned that isn't the spot on the falls of arrow breads called a thumbprint. No, it's called a spot or a signal, depending on whether it is a spot mm -hmm. or a signal or a combination mm -hmm. of the two. And that term signal is in a lot of beardless irises um, where you have- Spurious, a, Louisiana's, yeah. Um, Japanese, so on. Yeah. But breads can have both a beard and a signal. Mm -hmm. Yes. Some yes. of them. Okay. And uh, I think that that question about the iris, which one was it? Uh, I think she, uh, Izzy had mentioned the one before last. She says the one before the dark top. So I, I'm still not sure which one that is, but uh, maybe you can the one that. before the dark top. OK, well, yeah. one more time here. Let's see. OK, that's the dark top, that one. That is a seedling from Keith Keppel's garden. Okay. And the last uh, question, or, uh, question, I guess, is from Anna Cad. It says, what about eyelashes in Sudatas? That's another pattern in Sudata iris is the eyelash pattern. Now that I have not gotten into. I have not explored that area. Uh, I, I've got to say I focused uh, more on the bearded iris than the beard less. So um, I'll have to look up eyelashes. So I think that's, uh, that's all. I hope I didn't miss any there. Um, but I think that is, well, somebody did ask, will this program be available on YouTube after today for the people who got disconnected? Andy uh, answered that, says yes, but give us a few days. It will show up, but it takes a little while to do that. Okay. Um, Everybody in, ready the for Sudata, the test? In, in the Sudatas, they also refer to eyeliner. Really? Oh my goodness, yes, a whole because, makeup palette. Because, yes. because there's, a, there's an eye in the middle of the, the, the fall, and then it can be uh -huh. outlined with a solid line, which is the eyeliner, and then a little veining that comes out that looks like eyelashes. And the oh, eyelash cool. pattern in PCIs. Um, uh, yeah. Okay. We're going to have to rethink this whole thing. We're going to have a whole makeup case. It's too complicated. Of blush <laughs> and uh, shadowing and, <laughs> and uh, foundation, the foundation color. Is there a lipstick? I, we'll have to work on the lipstick. That may be the Puccini thing. There's one thing that I look at in terms of spot pattern. <laughs> spot pattern with the uh, dwarf you have the pumilla pattern which comes from iris pumilla but in the uh, tall bearded uh, i refer to the uh, variegata spot which is the one which is which is generally the dark with the light 
light rim. And I see that as being different from the uh, from the band because the band is actually a dark rim on light, whereas a variegated okay. spot it has you, you have a dark center with a very light rim around it. Okay. Derived, of course, from Iris variegated because the Iris variegated has that. If you look at Iris variegated, it has that rim around the, the falls. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Good. Thank okay. you. Thank you. Well, uh, Jill, I think we're ready to go over the uh, the test. The test. Okay. Let me share again here. Okay. Can you all see that? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. That those are the ten questions. They're all on the the screen there. Um, do you want me to go through them now or give people time to fill out things or how, how do you want to work this? Um, we might just give them one minute, but I think a lot of people probably have, uh, have already uh, been filling out the, the test, uh, but we can, we can wait. A, yes, we've gone through. Yeah, yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. The test. Uh, Jill, can you scroll up a little bit because the top of the questionnaire is not, uh, we can't see. Yeah, yeah see, this is just, just this is the title. This is the first question. Perfect. Uh, just go up a little bit. Uh, well, then I'm going to cut it off with my header. Oh, but that's okay. You can scroll down later. I mean, as you go, a little bit different. Okay. Just a tiny bit. Uh, the other way, the other way. Uh, Okay. There you go. Okay. My screen uh, just says Jill has started sharing, but it's not sharing. Uh huh. Yeah, it is sharing. It's uh, yes. It is on the. It's on my screen. Are there other people who cannot see it? Uh, you can't see. You know, you can't see the whole page, but Jill will will. Just yeah, down when she I'll, the, I'll start with the, the first question at the top of the page. Um, true or true or false, placata iris derive from luminata breeding. And the answer is false. It's the other way around. Question two, a thumbprint is a blank smudge of different color in the haft area of the flower and that the, the blank should be the word solid, a yeah, thumbprint. And that, and, and that one, there was a, a comment, would, could you go over the thumbprint one more time? So mm -hmm. that's, this should explain that, hopefully. Yeah. It's a solid smudge of different color in the haft area. Okay, true or false. Uh, Amina is a color pattern with white standards and only brown falls and that's false only is one of those trick words in a test uh, the uh, aminas can be any color on the falls the next quest question iris with white or lightened area around the beard is a zonal spot z-o-n-a-l Uh, the next question, true or false, Glaciata iris have no blue pigment in any of the flowers, and that's true. Luminata iris derived from placata breeding, and that is true. Bitone iris have standards and falls of two different colors, and that's false. Bitone iris have standards and falls of two variations of the same color. Normal iris veining shows darker lines than the ground color of the flower. Lighter veining indicates the luminata pattern. Next question, true or false? Variegata iris pattern always has pink standards and yellow falls, and that is false. 
Uh, the last question, true or false, distinctive color is in the eye of the judge. And that is true. As judges, you are judging the plant. That's part of the, the scoring of points is distinctiveness. Okay. Thank and that, you. And for those that will give you your hour of credit. Yeah, that gives you an hour credit. Um, and for those of you who have um, done that uh, here uh, by the electronic version, when you submit, hit submit, then your response has been recorded and that um, you've completed your, your uh, test requirement.